We've been working with workstations extensively at Storage Review, mostly looking at how the impact of the components in the workstation impact professional graphics users, whether it's CAD or rendering or now AI uh, model training and development. We did just review this system here. This is our tie-in server workstation build with a 96-core Genoa in it. We've also been playing with GPUs and all of these uh, Lenovo ThinkStations. And then, of course, with every new iteration of Dell or HPZ or whatever else comes into the lab, there's something new going on. We've just posted a review to the website of these two cards, NVIDIA's highest-end Workstation Pro cards. And for comparison, visually, I went ahead and grabbed the uh, Radeon Pro W7900 as well. But coming back to the NVIDIA cards, they look flat out identical. We've got the RTX, which one is on top? <laughs> okay. On top, we've got the RTX 6000 ADA, which is the newest version of this card, and then the RTX A6000 underneath. And while they both have 48 gig of graphics DDR6, the componentry inside couldn't be further apart from one another. And while we've been working with the A6000 primarily in high-end workstations for the last, uh, gosh, probably about a year and a half at this point, this guy, the Ada, has just started showing up in our review systems. And so we wanted to see head-to-head -head how these work out against each other. The RTX 6000 Ada has almost 8,000 more CUDA cores than the A6000. That's almost an 80% jump. Memory bandwidth is a little bit quicker on the Ada class as well at 960 gig versus 768. When we look at ray tracing, of course, the Ada class has got third generation ray tracing with a little markup in cores there. Tensor cores also get uh, generationally improved and tack on another 130 or so there in the Ada. With the Ada class RTX 6000, you do lose NVLink support. This uh, talking to Jordan is addressed mostly in software from NVIDIA, but we'll have to take a look at that a little more deeply when we see workstations come in with multiple of these Ada cards. There's also a change in the power connector. They're both little pigtails. Uh, this guy is the standard eight pin connector that we're used to with most graphics card. The new one in the Ada card is a 16 pin connector, which delivers more efficient power to the card. This card is about two grand US dollars more than this card. So as you're looking at workflows and understanding the impact of the cards on what you do, obviously the cost is going to factor into it. So the question is $6,800 for the Ada class or 4650, those are the prices on uh, Nvidia site at the time of this review. That's what you have to weigh in terms of determining which card is going to be right for you. So the cost of the card is one thing, but the performance that the Ada card delivers is really quite remarkable. And we'll look at the benchmarks here in a second. The, uh, the, the Ada card blows away the Ampere architecture in many, many use cases. And it's doing so in the same TDP envelope, 300 watts. So what you have to look at beyond just the pure spend for this card is what is the performance per watt per dollar. And we'll look at some of that as well. In addition to the power consumption overall in the rig, we ran a bunch of performance results in this review. I won't go over all of those here. You can check out the full review for more information. We'll have that linked in the description. But as we take a look at some of the highlights, uh, the Esri, the uh, GIS benchmark that we run, the Ada is much faster there in terms of FPS. It's a, uh, a big jump when we look at some of these models by about 20, 25%. As we look at the Luxmark 3D benchmark, here we see some pretty big gains in the Ada class card. Hallbench, for instance, is up way over 50%. Food is up almost 50% as well. As we look at Blender Optics, another open source 3D modeling application, we can see the RTX 6000 Ada almost doubling everywhere for the various models, including one where the gains are pretty astronomical, going from a samples permitted of 2875 to almost 6600. Again, when we look at Geekbench 6, which is a cross-platform benchmark that looks at overall system performance, we can see the RTX 6000 Ada absolutely crushing here putting up 357,349, well in excess of what the A6000 could do with 211,000. One more that we like to look at in terms of overall GPU computation ability is the GPU Pi computation, which looks at how fast the uh, GPU alone can handle a computation of Pi, 3.14 out to a very, very long way. And you can see the RTX 6000 ADA comes in at roughly half the time of the A6000. So from a performance perspective, while the cards look identical and one card's $2,000 more than the other, the RTX 6000 ADA is so much more powerful. And especially when you consider the power consumption, the performance per watt per dollar 
it's, it's inarguable. That's why we gave the RTX 6000 ADA our best of 2023 award. We only hand out a handful of those every single year. We think that card's going to be extremely meaningful to workstation professionals. And that's the card you're gonna want at least one of, if not more, in your next high-end workstation build. It's that good, it's dramatically better than everything else in the market, and uh, NVIDIA's clearly outdone themselves with this ADA class of GPUs. We can't wait to see more of the ADA class as they go down stack and start coming into the lab for review. And we also are looking forward to taking a bunch of these and jamming them in some server platforms and other places where we'll be able to characterize their performance a little bit differently, look at them in groups, look at how we can share them uh, to other workstations and other systems, VDI clients, all sorts of other stuff. There's lots of fun work to do with these cards in our lab, but for now, just know that this is the absolute best Workstation Pro graphics card you can get today.